It's Christmas time, 2022. We got the whole family here at Valley Forge National Historical Park. So it's the winter of 1777, December 19th. The British forces had just captured Philadelphia, about 20 miles south of here. Washington takes all of his troops north to this location to spend the winter. This is Valley Forge, and the Continental Army was here for exactly six months. At Valley Forge, there was a lot of supply challenges, so Washington continued with a dire warning to Congress, and he wrote, unless some great and capital change suddenly takes place in that line, this army must inevitably be reduced to one or other of these three things, starve, dissolve, or disperse. So this place is called a redoubt. It was 105 in the area, and this place particularly was important because it overlooked Philadelphia, and the British had occupied Philadelphia at the time, so they're far enough away to be protected, but at the same time they can keep an eye on the approaching troops if they were to come attack. And um, they used the natural defenses of the area, so this is up high on a hill because um, it would slow the people down that as they were walking up. They would have sticks pointing out, um, they would have watch people going on, so like I said, this was 105 in the area. They would signal to other people through telescopes um, if, to the other places if the British were coming along, and they just used a lot of the natural um, terrain as a sign of defense. So a lot of these houses too, they were built at least two feet underground and they used that as protection rather than using so much wood. So they did cut down most of the trees in the area and these have been replanted since then. Well, each ha house the squad of 12 enlisted soldiers. Too, these are reconstructed. They, the original ones did not last through the six months. Um, they were only meant to last through the winter of, that the army was there. Approximately 250 to 400 other women followed their husbands soldiers or sweethearts. Most of these structures were 14 feet by 16 feet and as a total there was 1300 to 1600 structures. So this is pretty amazing as soon as they arrived they started building these structures and when you consider all the soldiers that were here which was 12,000 and then about 400 women and children Valley Forge actually became the fourth largest city in the new land. All right, so we had 12 men living in one of these cabins. They built over a thousand of them, right? On the encampment. And uh, boy, it's cold today. Can you imagine spending the entire winter out here? Close accommodations, you got a fireplace, but yet um, it would have been chilly. Yeah. Definitely a sacrifice in regards to what these men, these soldiers did for our country. Wow. You can see on the southern flanks a lot of these large earthworks. And what they would do is protect that southern section from the invading army that could have been coming up from Philadelphia. And record has it that General Howe respected this location and never attacked Valley Forge. For as cold as it is here today, many people think that Valley Forge the people, the men died because it was so cold, but actually the worst winter in history was at Morristown in New Jersey two years later. Most of the men died here due to diseases, typhoid, influenza, um, typhus, dysentery. Those were the diseases that killed most of the men because it was very difficult for them to get things sanitary. Um, actually, uh, General Washington had them burn the cartridge of a musket every day inside their cabins to get the putrid air fresh. So it was really difficult for them to keep clean conditions. So this is a good time to say, as we were by the Memorial Arch, that of the 12,000 men that were stationed here, between 1,700 and 2,000 passed away during the six months here at this encampment. 
Years later, Lafayette recalled that the unfortunate soldiers were in want of everything. They had neither coats, hats, shirts, nor shoes. Their feet and legs froze till they had become almost black, and it was often necessary to amputate them. Thanks to uh, John Potts and his family, over several decades, the people of this valley established ironworks and expanded their mills and also built a lot of residential homes for the people of the community. Um, the area surrounding the valley was very rich in farmland, so that was great for them as well. George Washington later wrote of the march into Valley Forge, to see men without clothes to cover their nakedness, without blankets to lay on, without shoes by which their marches might be traced by the blood from their feet, and almost as often without provisions as with, marching through frost and snow, and at Christmas, taking up their winter quarters within a day's march of the enemy, without house or hut to cover them till they could be built, and submitting to it without murmur is a mark of patience and obedience which in my opinion can scarce be paralleled. The house itself is 70 to 80 percent original. The railing is original, yeah, right? Is, yes. So can you give us the names of the individuals that would have touched that rail? Uh, the you, famous how, ones. How long do you okay? I was gonna say, how long do you have? The ones that we would be familiar with. You, you've of course got George and Martha Washington, you've got Alexander Hamilton, John Lawrence, Tench Tillman, Richard Kidder Mead, Dr. James McHenry. Um, then you would have had people visiting the house who may have at least put their hand right there on the bottom. <laughs> Lafayette, Knox, Green, Wayne, Steuben, um, any of the generals of the armies, quite a few members of Congress as well who would have visited the house. Thank you. <laughs> Fascinating. Very interesting. All right, Shane, so you are looking right now at Washington's bedroom, aren't you? Yeah, it's crazy to think that Washington was in this room at one time. And Martha came to visit him on December 22nd, and it was during wartime, and she arrived in early February, so it took a while. So we are now up on the second floor. There are three bedrooms here. You just saw Washington's room. There's this room, room right adjacent to this, and then there's also kind of an upstairs third level room. Down on the lower level, you're looking at it right now, there was a meeting room up front, and then you had Washington's headquarters where all of his commanding officers would have been. That's what this room looks like right now. You're welcome. All right, so we are leaving Washington's headquarters right now. Boy, compared to the other accommodations for the rest of the soldiers, and you'd understand, he was the ultimate commanding general. He had a, a, a pretty good place to stay. He rented this house from Isaac Potts, and uh, I heard they made out pretty well financially. Some people say he rented it from Isaac Potts' uh, aunt, but uh, there's still some debate on that. But we're in the kitchen right now. Look at the kitchen. And although the house was nice, it really wasn't that big. But I read earlier that within that house, was housed Washington's entire military household, which would have been about 25 individuals. All right, so we got a whole bunch of cannons that are stationed here at Artillery Park. And what they would do is they would keep these cannons at the center part of the encampment, and then they can rush them to whatever location that they were needed. 14 to 15 men to work each cannon. During times of combat, they'd go with smaller numbers if necessary. Precise teamwork was essential. So due to two years of um, uneven recruitment, uh, shuffling leadership, and just the war, it led to the army being very disorganized and very weak. Even Washington's leadership was questioned um, during this period. The task of developing and carrying out an effective training program fell to Baron Frederick von Steuben, a Prussian drill master who had recently arrived from Europe. So what you're looking at here is the Grand Parade. This is the location where the American army was unified. The standardized training instilled at Valley Forge on the Continental soldiers had improved their performance on the battlefield, which would soon be tested at the Battle of Monmouth in New Jersey. We are at one of our favorite pizza places here by our house in New Jersey, Federico's. We're signing off on this video. Thanks for watching. Always room for you on every national park adventure. Please hit that subscribe button and from all of us, Merry Christmas and have a great 2023.